Hey, I'm John Morgan, and I want to talk with you about utilizing trends to strategize your business. Now, everybody thinks of trends as fashion. You're thinking about white or gray as being a popular color, or maybe shaker door styles are really hot. But trends are so much more than that. They are so much more valuable to your business, especially if you look all the way around and get as much information, not just about fashion, but about your business, your customers, the way people go to market today. So where do you find information like that? Well, here's a couple of great resources when it comes to trends. Obviously, NKBA is the preeminent resource when it comes to trends in the kitchen and bath industry. One of the things you'll really like about going through the NKBA trends is you can find trends on style, fashion, um, consumer preferences, and so forth, up to date, um, as well as information about your business and where businesses are going. So that's the number one place that I look for trend information for my business. Now, there's a couple of other places I go to as well. NAHB, the National Home Builders Association. Why do I look at their information? I look at their trend surveys because they're focused a little bit different than I see other places. They're really focused on showing us where people are spending dollars today, what segments. So you can look at is um, remodeling going up or down? Are multifamily home sales going up or down? Are new um, family uh, home starts um, going up or down? I like to look at that information because it determines where kitchens are being sold today because all of those places need kitchens and baths. I also look at how's. Howells has some really interesting trend information. What I like to look at within the Howells surveys is the fact that unlike, unlike NKDA or NAHB, they're not surveying professionals necessarily. They're actually surveying people who have already completed jobs. So they can give real-time information on the jobs that were just completed. I love being able to see the consumer perspective on trends. HGTV, now I'm not really using HGTV to find out what the trends are because HGTV is really reporting trends from people like NKBA. They're just reporting it. But what I really like about HGTV is, is it's what our customers are watching. So as a professional, it's important for you to know the information that your customer is getting and then for you to professionally guide them in the information, the details that are below what they've already received from television. And then there's always great journals that run their own um, trend surveys about business, about style, companies like KBB and Kitchen and Bath Design News. Now, here's a couple of key points, some keystones in your thoughts about trends. Number one, your goal should be to identify what consumers will want and need in the future. And here is the most important point to you. It's about positioning your business to meet that need. It's fine to know what the trend is, but you need to be in position to take advantage of it for your business, to better your business, and to also better the results to the client so you have a happier client. And the other piece of um, advice that I want to give you, and to me, this is one of the most important, please, please, please read past the headlines. Anybody can look in a journal and see that gray and white are popular. We as professionals need to know all the details below that so that we can invest in our businesses, invest in our customers, and make sure our customers are happy in the end. Now, here are five areas that I look at when it comes to trends. Number one, I look at trends to establish the business's current performance. What I mean by that is, is you need to know what the health of your business is. You might think you're being successful, but if you go out and you check the trends at NKBA or HALS or such, you might find out that you're not growing as fast as the market. You need to reevaluate your business and make course corrections along the way. You can only do that if you have trend data on your business performance. Number two, identifying who your target customer is. You want to know who it's going to be best and most profitable for you to be selling to, and that will change over time. If you take a look at trends, you will see sometimes single family home starts are skyrocketing and remodeling is down. Sometimes remodeling is skyrocket, single family is down. 
you need to be flexible enough and smart and knowledgeable enough to be able to continually evolve your business and position it to where items are being sold today and tomorrow. Number three, determine what products you should sell. That's the one most of us focus on automatically. Should I have white? Should I have gray? Should I have shaker doors? Um, those are types of things, not just in the sales process to your customer, but also if you think about it in investing in your showroom displays. Number four, ascertaining today's go-to-market best practices. And what I mean by that is how do people want to be sold to? Um, you have to you know, recognize that the way we all are inspired, the way we all research, the way we all make decisions about what we purchase changes constantly. And you can look into the marketplace to see the best way to position your products and your sales today. Number five, discovering the words that influence your prospects. This is huge for me and my business, and I'll share with you at the very end why I think this is important to you and your business. Now, let me take each one of these real quick and just give you an example. Establishing your, your business's current performance. I want you to look on the left. I have my little chart that goes from the frightening red face all the way up to the bright green happy face. That's our scale of our business's health. And if you look on the right-hand side, this is just one example of um, business trends or business surveys that you can review. It could be from NKBA. In this case, it's from Howells. And I want you to take a look at something real quick. I'm going to move over here to specialty building and renovation. Last year, it shows that businesses in this arena grew on average 8.9%. This year, the expected growth is 10.9%. You might be super excited that your business grew 5% this year, but if you go back and evaluate your business versus the industry, you're actually growing at almost half the pace of the industry. So it's important to always recognize good or bad where you are because this allows you to make adjustments in your business so that you are at least meeting the average growth and hopefully exceeding the average growth of the business. So please, please, please look for business trends before you even look for style trends. Number two, who should your target customer be? I mentioned earlier about sometimes single family homes are going up, sometimes remodeling is going up. You always want to be a part of the up cycle, right? You want to be in the upslope, not the downslope. So it's important to me that I look at NKBA reporting. I look at NAHB reporting. And here's some recent examples. Right now, NKBA says 80% of cabinetry is actually being sold to remodeling. Sounds like a really good place to be focused. But you might also find out, such as single-family home construction is going up 7%. Well, you might want to try to get a larger share of this new construction market. You need to know generational information about your customers. You need to know regional influence about your customers and be able to use this type of data to determine who you're going to sell to. Next, I want to go through and talk about determining products. This is really important about determining the products that you're going to have in your business. It's very, very easy to look at the broad view, the top line trends. The trends you're looking at right now from one of the NKBA surveys is what you would see as headlines in journals. You'd see transitional design, white and gray painted, dark woods, rollouts and pullouts are hot. But you as a professional need to be able to dig deeper than that. Your client's going to see information like this on their own. You need to be able to know the details below this to really help create the satisfaction that they're going to have in their future space. And here's an example. This is some trend data on color trends in a kitchen. And I want you to notice something. You're going to look and go, wow, white is number one. That's awesome. Gray is number two and blah, blah, blah as you go down this list. Now, here's what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to notice that if I look at white and gray, this dark purple area is telling me that we as designers or we as professionals in the industry actually expect gray to grow faster than white. So if I'm investing in tomorrow, I'm going to invest more in gray than maybe white. And if I go through the rest of the trends, you'll notice trends like two or more colors in the kitchen and blues are really hot. So again, as I'm making investments into showrooms, sampling, um, tools that I'm going to use with a client, that's where I want to focus my time. Where don't I want to focus? I don't want to focus at the bottom on all the reds. Because this is showing in the dark purple sections here that we as professionals are expecting these colors to decrease in use in the future. 
bones and beiges, browns, reds, anything that's kind of got a brown or a red in it right now is going down. So I need to make great business decisions based on seeing where the trends are going much more than just seeing the top line that white and gray are hot. These help us make great decisions. Next, you might even go into trends when it comes to styles and focus on um, generations. A generational look at this would show you that if we're looking over here, I'm looking at um, Gen X, or, I'm sorry, Gen Xers are in the middle. I'm looking over here um, and looking at millennials. On the right, I'm looking at um, uh, baby boomers. If we look at some colors, for instance, let's drop down here and say cabinets. You'll see that, um, that millennials are much, I shouldn't say much more, but almost 20% more interested in white than are the baby boomers. You can look over here and see gray. Millennials are almost doubly interested when it comes to gray than the boomers are. So knowing who you're selling to and what their interest level and colors are going to help you be more um, successful when it comes to the sales process. Now, item number four, best market practices. Um, think about how you shop today. Now, if you think about how you shop, your customers are probably going to shop in a very similar manner. So you as a student going through education right now, you have certain preferences when it comes to being inspired. What tools do you want to use? You're going to use smart devices, your phone, iPads, and tools like that. If your buying habits are like that, I want you to think that your consumers are going to want to purchase in that way too. So make sure that you're following trends in consumer behavior, and you can actually just look at yourself most of the time to be able to find that, and you want to leverage consumer behavior, and you want to make sure that your showroom or your selling techniques match the way consumers want to buy. This evolves every day. Pay attention to the trends. And number five, words that impact. This is one of my favorite ones, um, primarily because I sell, so I'm always speaking to people and I need to influence them to make the decisions that are going to be good for them and for my business at the end. One of the, thing, one of the areas where I think people pay the least amount of attention, but what I think is some of the most important information in trend surveys, is the verbiage, the words that the, that the um, surveyees use when they report back. I want you to notice something over here. This is a, an example of storage. And it says over here, the top reasons that people want to use um, storage within their kitchen. You'll see number two is make it easier to find items. Number three is reduce clutter. A lot of times the surveys will actually have quotes from the customers. What I do with my team is I go back and I actually go through surveys and I highlight certain words. Things like easier to find things, reduces clutter. Because I know from the surveys that these are words that consumers use to convey the importance or the need or the desire for that product. So I want to leverage those words when I'm speaking to other people that are interested in my products because I know that consumers already connect with that. So if somebody on my team is going to talk about storage inside of a cabinet, they're not just saying, hey, we have rollout trays. Hey, we have waste baskets. Hey, we have this. We have that. They're going to say, hey, let's look at these items because it's going to make it easier for you to find things in your kitchen. Or if we have these inserts in the cabinets, geez, it reduces clutter all over the room. We're going to use words that are proven as being successful and enticing, exciting, engaging a customer to actually purchase our products. So you can even look in details right down to the words the customers use and use them to benefit your business. So hopefully you saw a number of great ways to use trends well beyond fashion. So I want to thank you for your time today. And please, please, please go back and review this and implement some of these in your business right away because it's going to help you be more successful. But at the end of the day, it's going to help you provide the awesome space that your client deserves.